Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. On today's video, we're gonna talk about the black cherry tree. Can a black cherry tree poison your livestock? Well, to properly answer that question, we need to first identify the black cherry, the wild black cherry. Very prolific in North American areas. Hood's wearing me out. I'm still climbing the hill too. Um, here's a black cherry right here. Another one right behind me, the decent one right there actually. So they're all over the place. I believe from Canada all the way down to the southeast of uh, the United States, very prolific. It is a native tree, so it's not an invasive species or anything. And it is an actual cherry tree. It does produce cherry fruit. Now I normally like to do these plant identification videos in the summertime or the spring when there's leaves on, but I think it's important to uh, be able to identify the cherry all year long, simply because of the concern that you have when it comes to livestock. So here's a black cherry here. And as you can see, it's right behind our, our pig barn uh, that we just uh, put the siding on. So it's it's right here in the pasture. The pigs have access to all this. Um, this is a deciduous tree. Obviously it loses its leaves in the fall. The leaves are usually easy to identify uh, on the tree. Obviously just grab some here on the ground. Um, I'll show you some pictures of a green one so they look better. Um, but they're a, a single leaf, a, a simple leaf, as far as just a single lobe, serrated, come to a point, all those type of things. Uh, so again, kind of looks like a beech a little bit, um, but, but not exactly. Um, <clears throat> probably the easiest way to identify a cherry tree is its bark. If you look here, the, the cherry tree has these little platelets in their bark. It's, it's really coarse. I'll give you some scale here with my hand. So it's really coarse. Um, for some reason it reminds me of cornflakes. I don't know if it's because I'm always hungry when I'm in the woods, but um, just these these smaller plates. So much, much smaller than uh, <coughs> a white oak. Obviously, uh, you know, things like red oak don't have the plates. Uh, red oak and poplar, hickory, all those things. Um, here's another, here's that other black cherry I'm standing against. So you can see it has all these, it's really coarse. I mean, it's definitely not a tree you want to run, run up and rub against in your short sleeves or or you run your face down the side of, obviously, because it's extremely, extremely coarse. So that's probably the easiest way to identify a cherry. If you're standing back in the woods and you can look out, then you can see them pretty easily. Like way over there, that, that darker tree that's going up there, that's a cherry tree. Uh, so they're pretty easy to identify once you figure out what that bark looks like. Again, you're looking for those, those platelets, very coarse, very... Uh, rough looking flaky like pieces you know if you look here i know i'm getting off on a tangent here but if you look at the shag bark right behind it you can see shag bark has long flakes but they're really long ribbons like there's a long ribbon right there whereas the cherry just has these little tiny plates uh, that come off it was about two degrees colder i think it'd be snow so cherries, um, yeah, they are cherry trees, so they do produce fruit, and that fruit is edible for human consumption. There's people that make wine and jellies and all kinds of stuff out of the cherries that come off of these. Now, obviously, the trick is getting to them, because if you let a canopy grow real high, then they're way up there. But, uh, yeah, so they do have some uh, edible properties to them. It's my understanding, too, that even the bark uh, can be used for cough syrup and some other medicinal purposes, the inside of the bark. You can usually find cherry trees in areas of the forest that have been recently cleared. So for example, where I'm standing, yeah, there's one, two, three, uh, four, five that we were at just a second ago. Just in this area, there's five, uh, probably in a you know, 100 square foot area here. And this area at one time was cleared, probably back in the 70s, 80s, it was all cleared out. So uh, these cherry trees usually come back, you see them coming back on, on forest that's starting to regrow. And you also find a lot on pasture edge or clearing edge. So if you've got uh, an area that's been cleared and the hardwood forest is, is here, then cherry tend to, to grow up in those areas. And they can get quite tall, they can get over 100 feet, uh, they can get huge. I had a cherry tree on the back when we had it placed timbered, it was... It was easily 30 some inches in diameter. So they can get pretty large as well. So now that we've identified it, let's answer the original question. Can a cherry tree poison your livestock? And the answer is yes, absolutely. They can be pretty deadly to your livestock. Now this tends to be more toward the side of ruminants and not swine, of course. Um, that's why I'm, I'm really not that worried about having cherry trees in my pasture. But the issue 
Easy girls. The issue isn't uh, the tree actually being there. It's not like a pig's going to come up and rub up against it or a ruminant's going to come up and rub up against it and die. It, it really, the, the, the real issue exists in the leaves. It's the leaves you have to watch out for. So within the leaves of the cherry tree is enough toxin that actually is, as the leaves come off, is become cyanide. The leaves contain cyanide in them. So uh, when an animal comes in contact with the green leaves, that becomes the issue. And what you usually find, the, the real issue is if a tree, let's say this, we're in the middle of summer, this tree uh, um, has a full canopy and windstorm knocks it over, and I've got goats or cows or sheep or whatever that are, that are in this area, and they come through and they strip the leaves off of that tree after it's uprooted, that's when you can have your poisoning. That's when you can have your loss. So when that tree uproots and it's still green, it's still covered in leaves, the canopy's still there, and those leaves start to wilt, that's when you get the maximum concentration of cyanide in each leaf. Obviously some of the water's come out, but the cyanide has stayed behind. This is actually a maple, it's not a cherry. Um, so that's where you got to watch out. So again, if we had grazers here, browsers, you know, if it comes up and strips the leaves off of this limb and they're wilted, then that animal just poisoned itself and could be fatal. In fact, I'm going to read a stat here so I don't mess it up. According to the book Toxic Plants of North America, as little as 1.2 to 4.8 pounds of wilted leaves could prove to be lethal for a 1,200 pound dairy cow. So that's you know, 1.2 to 4.8 pounds. That's not a lot of leaves. That's you know, maybe a five gallon bucket worth of leaves. Um, your cow's going to blast through that in no time. <clears throat> An additional stat, for a 180 pound sheep, the amount is only 0.18 to 0.72 pounds of leaves. So for a full size sheep, you're looking at not even a, just barely a, a fifth of a pound uh, can become fatal. So just imagine if you've got uh, goats, like pygmy goats or, or any of the Nubians, anything like that, um, that becomes an issue. And you could definitely have, uh, have some dead livestock on your hands. Interestingly enough, I have not been able to find any conclusive data, any, any data from an extension service or anything that says, here's an account of, of pigs, pastured pigs being poisoned by cherry uh, leaves. There's, I haven't seen anything out there. There's some anecdotal stuff. Uh, again, I've had uh, pigs all throughout the pasture here and have not had any issues with that. Obviously, I've had pig issues, but no issues with uh, cherry poisoning. So if you have ruminants on your farm, what am I suggesting? What do you do? Do you go through and eradicate all of them? Yeah, I don't know about that. Obviously, that's your call. But the thing I would definitely do is identify them. Like I have a pretty good idea where the cherry trees are in my pasture just because as we clear land, uh, I go through and identify the tree, so I know what's what. I know there's a cherry right over there. So identifying those would be very, very helpful. So in the spring, in the summer, when the leaves are out and you've got cherry either in your pasture or along your pasture edge, because you want to make sure even on the other side of your fence, you need to know where those cherry trees are, because if they get blown over and fall into your pasture, then of course you could be exposing your livestock. So I'd go through and I'd mark them, I'd identify them. And then uh, if you have severe weather, if you had bad storms, then it's time to, to walk the fence line. Check those trees out to make sure they have not uprooted or a big top hasn't broken out of it. And uh, now your ruminants have exposure to those leaves. If you want to be 100% uh, cautious, then obviously come through and cut them out. The thing that aggravates me or concerns me when you look at some of these extension services and what they're recommending, they're recommending, hey, come by, we'll give you some glyphosate or we'll give you some other herbicide and you can lay these cherry to waste and just go through and spray everything and eradicate it. Again, that takes care of the cherry, but obviously that opens up a, a whole bunch of other issues when it comes to uh, glyphosate on your property and all those type of things. So I'm not a big fan of wiping them out. And the reason why, obviously I'm biased, and the reason why is this next point. So I really like cherry simply because of its hardwood value, its uh, woodworking value. Here's a chunk of uh, eight quarter cherry a little natural edge on it. Um, I believe my brother was making knife blanks out of that at one point, but whatever. Um, so really, really nice hardwood to use in the wood shop. Uh, very coveted by woodworkers. It's, it's kind of a higher end uh, hardwood. 
if you look at the cost per board foot of kiln dried cherry compared to you know oaks or the poplars or those type of things, it's dramatically higher. I've seen it go for as much as eight to ten dollars a board foot. And the neat thing about it, the neat thing about it is as it gets a chance to patina or as it ages, it gets exposed to UV light, it really gets a nice darker color. It gets really, really rich, a dark red, you know, almost a cherry red. Good figure. And um, I really like it for detail wood. Um, there's like in the office of, my, uh, of the house, there's a hardwood floor. We put down tavern grade, which is really a rough grade. Uh, cherry hardwood floor. I just love the look of it. It's got sapwood in it. It's got cracks. It's got all this kind of stuff. It just really looks looks very rustic to me, but it's a beautiful. And that wood just keeps getting darker and darker and darker. You know, that's been down for probably 12 years now. So if you went back and looked at it when it wasn't, uh, when it was brand new, then of course it was a lot lighter. Same with some of the details in the bookcases. Uh, you can see here in this, this clip, uh, trimmed out in cherry. So that as those uh, set near the uh, windows, they got darker and darker. And even some details around the fireplace uh, trimmed those out in cherry just to give it that nice extra touch. I like the way it marries up with some of these mid-tones like white oak and red oak uh, and, and even maple for that matter. It's a great contrast with maple. So if you've got cherry on your homestead, take some time to walk around and identify it, especially if you've got ruminants and just make sure you know where it is and be prepared to deal with it if uh, it obviously would come down. I forgot about this one right here beside the workshop. Uh, that tree laying down is a cherry tree and it actually uprooted in a storm during the spring. Now I don't believe uh, I had pigs on that pasture at the time uh, so obviously no tests there. I can't and um, I can't in full confidence say that it's a non-issue for pigs but uh, I've yet to run into it. So check out your cherry trees. All right take care everybody.